Hi everybody, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm coming to you with my October TBR, which I am extremely, extremely excited for. October is my favorite month out of the year, and I'm going to be participating in two readathons. I am a little nervous about it. Um, the last readathon that I attempted to do was Reading Rush back in July, and that was a massive fail based on some uh, circumstances that were going on in my personal life that were beyond my control. And I want to redeem myself with that, basically. So I'm attempting not one, but two readathons, because I couldn't decide which one that I wanted to do. And those are going to be the Hocus Pocus readathon and Spookathon. And they are actually back-to-back, -back, which works out really, really well for me. Um, but I'm super, super excited for this, and I can't wait to share these books with you. It's ambitious. I know it is, but I'm hoping that this will push me out of my reading slump that I'm currently in right now. I'm not too happy with the way that my reading is going this month, um, and I want to be able to correct that next month because I know I'm not going to meet goal in the next 11 days. Um, let's go ahead and jump right into um the TBR. The first readathon that I'm going to talk about is the readathon for Hocus Pocus. That takes place from October 1st to the 13th, and I'm not exactly sure if the creators are on YouTube, but the book, the uh, video that I found it was, I found out about it on the Bookish Sock, and I'm not actually sure if, uh, if she is one of the creators, but that's the first video that I found that was the announcement video that I saw. Um, I think it's primarily going to be run off of Twitter, and I will make sure to uh, have all of those handles and links down below for you guys as well in case you want to join up. Um, but I'm going to go off of the information that I have as of right now. If anything changes, I will of course update you. Okay, um, there are three prompts three teams that go along with the Hocus Pocus Readathon, and I chose the uh, Team Sanderson Sisters um, simply because the prompts seemed to, like to be a little bit more to my liking, and there were more options for me going off of those prompts. But let me go ahead and get started with you guys. So for my team prompts, Selling your soul to Master Satan was only the beginning of your magical journey. Unfortunately, your deal with him couldn't include immortality. It's been centuries since the spellbook made that curse, and finally, it's time to rise. Make sure you complete your prompts in order to get enough points to reach your goal. For uh, potions, spells, and enchantments, read a book with a witchy main character. For this one, this one was easy for me, and I'm going to be reading Shadow Spell by Nora Roberts. Sorry, there's a glare. Um, this is book two in the Cousins of Dwyer trilogy, and each book in the series is based on a different member in this family that has witchy powers. And I read uh, the first one, which was Dark Witch, which I absolutely loved, and I've been meaning to get to this one for quite a while, but other things have kind of gotten in my way, and I literally just got this book in recently, so when I saw that prompt, I immediately thought of this, and I cannot wait to get back into it. The Sanderson Sisters Have Risen. Read a book with a female protagonist. This one, for me, is not going to be a witchy book, but it is a thriller, and it's one that I'm excited for. That is Dark Places by Gillian Finn. Um, but this is the story of a woman who is trying to solve the murders of her family years later as an adult. I read, I saw the movie a while back and I loved it. And at that time, I did not know that it was a book. So since that time, I have found out about the book and I've been super, super excited to get into it to try to compare. I know that books are generally better. It's usually in my opinion, but there are a few rare occasions, but I loved the movie, so I'm fully, fully expecting to enjoy this as well. The magic book is calling to you. Read a book that is spellbindingly atmospheric. 
I can only go off of what I'm assuming from what I know about these books, of course. Um, but for this one, I chose The Girl in 6E by A.J. Tor. A.R. Tor, excuse me. Um, this is a story of a woman with agoraphobia who has shut herself up into her apartment because she is afraid of the very, very strong murderous tendencies that she has. She thinks about murder a lot, so she shuts herself up into her apartment in an attempt to try to repress these uh, these urges that she has. And I think it sounds really, really cool. I'm assuming the majority of it is going to be in this apartment, like dealing with her mind and everything. It sounds very psychological. So I wanted to read this one for this prompt, and I was supposed to read this in July. It was one of the ones that I didn't get to, so this is my opportunity to jump into it now. <laughs> Burning Rain of Death. Read a book that frightens you. I don't get frightened super, super easily as much as I love thrillers and I love horror books. Um, Stephen King usually gets under my skin um, pretty well. Um, not always with his spooky stuff. Like He also tends to write a lot about life and different you know, situations about like the evil within a person. It's not always horror in the traditional sense. But for this one, I chose The Dark Half. And this one is about a writer who ends up having his um, pseudonym come to life and having to fight him, if I remember that correctly. Um, I, have not, I haven't read this one before, but it seems like an interesting concept. I'm a writer, and... I love the sound of that. I can't believe that I haven't gotten to it before, and I'm really, really excited to jump into this one. Master Satan is pleased with you. Read a book with a powerful villain. For this one, I decided to choose a Harry Potter book. Um, I'm not sure at this moment which one it is going to be. I'm currently reading Goblet of Fire. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish that this month or not. Um, if I don't, then it will probably be that one. Um, but if I do, I will be moving on to Order of the Phoenix. And as you know, the main villain in those books is Lord Voldemort. He's a very extremely evil person. And that's also like one of the... Um, weaknesses that I forgot to mention at the beginning of the readathon. Each team has a strength and a weakness, and the weakness for this one is that you have to read a uh, at least one YA book, so that'll take care of that one as well. And work together with your team to take down the horrible children and become immortal. Read the group book. Uh, there were two options for the group book. One was Hocus Pocus and the sequel, and the other one was Serpent and Dove. Um, I personally, as of this moment, am choosing Serpent and Dove, but that very well may change um, later on down the line. If it does, I will do an update. Um, okay, I should mention that the rules with the Hocus Pocus Challenge are actually very simple. There aren't very many of them, but the first one is sign up for a team with a team tracker and that will be on Twitter. I'm going to leave the uh, links down below for you guys. Um, the next one is one book per prompt. There will be no doubling up on this if you want your points. Um, that one's going to be a little bit trickier but I'm trying I'm going to try so so hard to get that one done and then obviously be kind. Be nice to other people you know Everybody has different reading tastes. Let's not attack each other. And have fun. The whole point of this is to just, you know, get out there, read to your heart's content, have fun with it, and really, really enjoy what you're doing. So that is it for the uh, Hocus Pocus readathon. Oh, read the, watch the movie, obviously. You have to watch the movie. Okay, um, and then 
I will also be participating in Spookathon, which is going to be hosted by Books and Lala, and I will leave her channel down below for you guys as well. But um, her readathon is going from October 14th to the 20th, so basically as soon as Hocus Pocus ends, which I really, really like. I'm not trying to uh, do too much at once. So I, I like that I can get, just go straight from one into the next one. And for this one, there are five prompts, and she is perfectly fine with um, doubling up challenges, which I'm going to attempt to not do, but I might have to do it. So um, again, if this changes, I will let you guys know. Um, it's all going to depend on how fast I'm getting through everything, especially since that's going to be closer to the end of the month. Um, but as of right now, I'm trying to do a different book for each prompt. And the first prompt is read a thriller. Um, for that, I picked The Mitford Murders by Jessica Fellows. Um, I really, really liked the sound of this when it came in my Bookcase Club subscriptions box this month. And I've been waiting for an opportunity to get into it. I was hoping to have already gotten to it this month, but... Like I said, my uh, reading goals haven't been quite what I was expecting as of right now. Um, but I'm, I'm super, super excited for this one. I will actually link um, that video down below for you guys so that you can um, hear the synopsis for this book because it's given in full. Okay, the next prompt was read a book with red on the cover. This one was easy for me. I was planning on getting to this book in October anyway, and it's read all over the place. And that is Dr. Sleep by Stephen King. It's kind of hard to tell on camera, but the whole thing's read. And this is the follow-up to The Shining. Um, this follows the main character, Danny, as an adult, and how everything that happened in The Shining affected him, um, going past that in his teenage years and into adulthood, and the movie is actually coming out in November, so I really, really want to uh, get to this in October, so it was so easy to work it in, and I'm glad that I have a chance to get to it. The next prompt is read a book with a spooky word in the title. Um, this title kind of gives me spooky vibes, but I don't think the book is supposed to be from what I've heard about it, and that is Splintered by A.G. Howard. Okay, and the next prompt is read a book in a spooky setting, and for this I chose Cujo by Stephen King. This one is very, very largely takes place in a vehicle where a mother and her small child are hiding from a rabid dog. I'd say that's spooky. I'd say that's atmospheric. And I'd say it's pretty spellbinding as well. So I'm very, very excited to get into it. It's relatively short for a king book, but that's perfect for a readathon like this. And I didn't get to it in July when I wanted to. So I have another opportunity that I'm very, very, very excited for. Okay, and the last prompt is read something you wouldn't normally read. Now, this one is not in any way supposed to be a spooky book, I don't believe, although I'm sure there are elements in it that could be considered spooky from what I have heard, and that is Game of Thrones. by George R.R. R. Martin. Um, this is ordinarily not a genre that I would really, really dive into, but I've heard so many wonderful things about it that I've been meaning to read this for a little bit, but I kept pushing it back on my TBR because it's not something that I would typically go for, and this is the perfect opportunity for me to put my inhibitions aside 
and go ahead and get into this. I may very well may end up loving it and want to read the rest of the series. I don't know, but we will find out. It's it's a chunker. Um, I'm hoping that I get to it. I'm not sure. It's just going to depend on how everything else goes. Um, but I'm super, super excited for that. I will make sure to leave uh, links to the videos down below for you guys. Um, for our Books and Law Lost channel and for the Bookish Sock and the Twitter links as well for the Hocus Pocus readathon. Um, but that's all that I have for you guys today. Um, be sure to leave a comment down below, like and subscribe if you like this video, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!